This is our space we're going to be filming in today, and there are no lights on. No lights on in the house. Right now, I'm being lit from this window. The light on my face doesn't look super interesting. It's fairly flat looking, and uh, the colors in the background are bland, and, and nothing really pops like it should. So, this is what we're going to do. We're going to light a scene right here without lights. Sometimes you don't need lights. It's doing something here. Ouch. Oh. Don't include that. Be careful around C-stands. I just smashed my thumb. I realized that Peter McKinnon's subscriber count was unnecessarily high. That's when I discovered a new YouTuber. A grown man who looks like the little boy from the movie Up. He's called Potato Jet, and he's a filmmaker who needs our help. So do as I did and subscribe to Potato Jet, a lovable butterball, so he can have more subscribers than Peter McKinnon. You won't regret it, because Potato Jet actually appreciates each and every subscriber. We are in the Home Depot parking lot. This is a very magical, special place, but the real magic is inside. Now, this is no B&H photo. Welcome to the B&H Superstore. We invite you to experiment with these products. But what we're going to buy here today is very special. We're going to buy something that will control the sun. And today, we will become sun wizards. Get it. There's something else we're gonna buy. I'm gonna buy it in here. This is America's store. It's huge, it's all over the place. And we're gonna buy a tool that we can use today. And it's a secret. It's a secret weapon, and I'm not gonna tell you what it is. Yet. I'm not gonna tell you yet. The time will come. Last time we did this, it was a lot easier to pull off. You need to take this plastic stuff off. But we started peeling it off, and it was not working. It would just come off in little pieces. So, what we did was grab this heat gun. You could use a blow dryer, too. And uh, if you slowly peel it back and heat it at the same time, it will come off nice and easy. Now, there's a little bit of coloring left over on this one because we didn't peel it back correctly originally. But that's not going to be a problem. When you heat it up, it becomes harder on the, on the edges. Gaff tape is so wonderful. If you're a filmmaker and you don't own gaff tape, stop not owning gaff tape and go buy some. It's more expensive than regular tape, and you can probably only buy it on like B&H Photo or Amazon or the internet, basically. You can't buy this stuff at Home Depot, I've asked. We never go shoot and forget gaff tape. Gaff tape is one of the most important things we have on set. Skip forward to the more interesting parts. This is weird. If you're watching this part right now, you're very interested in filmmaking and foam for some reason and knives maybe, or maybe you like the ASMR, the sound. Let's listen for a minute. We made these, and I got some old ones that were falling apart, and I cut them down, made them smaller, and we made these too. And uh, small ones are nice too, because you can travel with them easier. Look at that wonderful light on my face. That's what we're going for, or we can make it super bright. We are in Arizona, where the sun is always really, really, really bright for some reason. Did you know Arizona is brighter than other places in the world? This is a duck clamp. They call this a duck clamp because it kind of looks like a duck bill. Very cute. All right. I'm going to clamp this duck clamp onto this shiny board. What we're trying to do is bounce the sun all the way from over there into the house. Hmm. Oh, oh, there, there we go, there we go. It's 
doing it's doing something here. Ouch! Oh! Don't include that. So we have to remember that the sun is always moving. So we might have to come out here and adjust this again. We can't just forget about it. Step one completed. We need to diffuse the light coming through the window because it's way too harsh. So I'm gonna set up a diffusion. You're in the shot, almost out. Now you're out. We're already looking a lot better. What I wanna do now is give her a little bit of a backlight. And this is gonna be the trickiest thing we do because the sun's not coming from that way, it's coming from that way. So we're gonna take out our secret weapon right now. It's this. We bought this mirror at Walmart for $7. And I think this will help us get a really good backlight on Lynn. This is called a Cardellini clamp. It's very useful. I hope I don't break the mirror when I put this clamp on it. We're going to be able to use this to really shine a harsh light onto Lynn here. There we go. Ooh, and it's gonna give you some extra fill. Yeah, look at this. This is gonna give us some extra fill because it's hitting our bounce board and it's hitting her hair ever so slightly. I watched 1917 recently, and I actually watched the behind the scenes as well. And uh, Roger Deakins, the director of photography for that movie, said they didn't use any lights. Now, they did use practical lights when they were inside, and it was just lamps and so forth. And uh, there was a night scene where they had flares going over this dark town. But for the daylight scenes, they waited for the perfect time of day, and they didn't use lights. The reason why they didn't use lights is because they couldn't, because the camera was moving so much. Sometimes with the restraints you have as a filmmaker, you need to find different ways to make a pleasing image. Being able to really harness natural light and use the sun to our advantage is a skill that each of us need to have. I'm gonna get one more reflector outside and I'm going to hit it across those back cabinets to make it look like there's a streak of light coming through. By the way, with locked off shots where the camera's not moving, there's one trick that I love. It comes in handy a lot. What I do is I film the shot, I don't touch the camera, and then I put on more stops of ND and I capture the window light. And then in editing, I put the exposed window over the overexposed window. I'm going to take this camera off and go handheld, and we're gonna do a series of shots here. Happier. Yes, good moment. Okay. Keep your hand still just for a second. Do that again, I wanna see the butter, one second. Okay, and do it again. Ew, wonderful. Well, there you have it. You don't actually need lights. You can use things like reflectors, bounces, and even mirrors. When you use natural light like this, you can't get everything you want. There are compromises. I wasn't 100% happy with what we got here today, but uh, we did what we could under the circumstances with the equipment that we have. And I think that's what filmmaking is all about. Trying your best with what you have with the time that's given to you. And it's so enjoyable. I don't know if any of you relate to this, but when I'm filming 
Time is irrelevant. Everything passes away, and I feel like I'm in the zone. I'm doing what I'm meant to do. If you feel the way I do while you're filming, it's what you're supposed to do. It's making you happy. When you follow your passions and you do what you love, things just work out. You're happier, you feel like you're on a track to, towards something that's important. But the most important thing is when, while you're doing that activity, like filming or painting or writing, whatever it is, Time goes away, time's irrelevant, and you enter this special space where you're pretty much playing. You're not working, you're playing, and, and, and life is fun and wonderful. So if you have a passion for something, follow it, keep doing it, do whatever you can to do it as much as you can, and you'll get better at it, and maybe someday somebody might pay you for it. Pat yourself on the back. You're amongst the elite in television viewing right now at this very moment. I realized that Peter McKinnon's subscriber count was unnecessarily high. That's when I discovered a new YouTuber. A grown man who looks like the little boy from the movie Up. He's called Potato Jet, and he's a filmmaker who needs our help. So do as I did and subscribe to Potato Jet, a lovable butterball, so he can have more subscribers than Peter McKinnon. You won't regret it, because Potato Jet actually appreciates each and every subscriber.